good to be with you tonight on the program. Hope you're being strengthened and blessed in the Lord. We're going to uh, tonight, uh, well, look at some of the things that we've been looking at for the longest time concerning our nation and what obviously is the life or the death of it uh, coming up to this particular election. Now, understand clearly. I'm not telling you who to vote for. What I'm doing is what I'm called to do. I'm showing you those that labor among us. Now, those of you who are Christian, which you would assume that 99% of what's watching this Christian station professes themselves to be Christians. Therefore, you should know that God's word commands us to know them that labor among us. Well, it's the only right thing we can do, and it's the only fair thing I can do. This is my calling. It's what I've been put here to do, to minister God's word. Now, we don't deal with politics. We deal with people. Now, people's what makes up politics because it's what makes up politicians. But because a person is a politician does not mean that they are exempt from what the Bible calls righteous, evil, wicked, abominable. So, the question is, who are we dealing with? And not to slander anybody. That's how come, if you've watched this program for any length of time at all, scarcely have I ever said, represented, or produced anything concerning what anyone is doing that I did not honor you enough to show you them doing it. And then we decide, based upon what the Bible says, with a biblical definition, what is evil, what is wickedness, and what are abominations. Now, as I've told you many times before, but now we're running out of time because it's just about to happen. We are fixing to put somebody in the place of power over us. We are fixing to put somebody, not a politician, we are fixing to put somebody, some human being, over us, granting them the greatest power on this earth. So it's only reasonable that we should concern ourselves with who they are. Now, I'm looking at people and the judgments that I make concerning them is based upon what the Bible says is a righteous judgment. And some of you has been duped into and fooled and made to believe that you're not supposed to judge, judge ye not. But the Bible, Jesus said, judge ye not according to appearance. That means don't judge a prejudiced judgment. But Jesus went on to say, when you judge, judge ye a righteous judgment. So what is a righteous judgment? So a righteous judgment is what God has already judged a thing to be. So when the Bible speaks of evil and evil works, the Bible in graphic detail from Genesis to Revelation shows us what evil works are. And it says it is evil. So does it with also with wickedness and abominations. I'm going to show you tonight what wickedness does and give you basically the last warning that I will be able to give you. The Bible tells us in the book of Jeremiah of a time whenever Israel was, well, in a situation just like us right now. Chapter 6, verse 27 and 28. I have set thee for a tower and a fortress among my people, that thou mayest know and try their way. They are all grievous, revolters, walking with slanders. They are brass and iron. They are all corrupt. And what he means by this brass and iron, 630 tells us, reprobate silver shall men call them because the Lord hath rejected them. Well, the only silver that is reprobate and bad is a silver that has more trash in it than it does silver. It's biblically called dross, dirt, impurities. And whenever a nation reaches this level, a nation that was supposed to be gold or silver, 
Well, the Bible says this. The Bible says that in every house there is gold, silver, wood, hay, and stubble. Now, true gold and silver is purified by the fire. Fire don't burn it up. It purifies it because it burns the impurities out of the gold and out of the silver. So when the gold and the silver goes through the furnace, it comes out the other side better than it went in because all the dross has been burned up. But there's not only gold and silver in each and every house. There's also wood, hay, and stubble. Now the wood, hay, and stubble will never survive the fire because wood will burn up in a fire, hay and stubble also. Now, whenever a people becomes, well, so reprobate, a people who was once enlightened, as the Bible says, and they turn on their God, they become reprobate silver, the Bible says. In other words, it is rejected. And that is exactly what the Bible is talking about. You see here that the Lord said plainly that he puts people Individuals, I have set thee for a tower and a fortress among my people. Listen, that thou mayest know and try them. That's what God's word commands us to do. To know them and to try them. But to know them by what? To know them by the word of God. This is not complicated. You are a Christian. The Bible is supposed to be the foundation of your life, of your world. Not the Bible that some preacher quotes you. The Bible you have studied. The Bible that is in your brain. That saturates your spirit. The word of God. As a Christian. That is what makes you in Christ and Christ in you. For the word was God. And the Bible says the word is God. So we will be able to judge how much God is in each person by how much of his word is in each person. Because you cannot have God and not his word. And the level of God that you possess in your being is straightly determined and strictly determined by how much of God's word you have in you. And not, that's not just the scriptures that you like. The one that tells you you're going to prosper and get rich. It's the whole counsel of God's word. That's what balances you. That's what makes you a true Christian. God has called us to try them. So we're only doing what the Bible says to do. Try those that labor among you. Know them that labor among you. And so I'm going to show you. A political party that is a party of demons, that is a party of witches, that is a party of communists and atheists. There is no hiding it. It's right there to see. First thing, look at this. Spooked. Witches complain they cannot cast harmful spells on Trump. Online, witches versus patriarchy. They complained, these witches. Some other witches have mentioned that doing spells directly against Trump are not as effective as we hope, as he seems to have some kind of protection around him. One of the witches bemoaning the fact that their spells aren't working on Donald Trump. Now, you know how much credibility I put in this? Zero. Nothing. But here's the fact. On the side that's voting against Donald Trump, you don't like him, it's your business. I'm simply making a statement. The side that's voting against Donald Trump, that side has witches. Witches that's voting for their candidates. Witches that's voting for their people. Witches that's for their parties. And these witches have gotten together and they're trying to cast spells on Donald Trump. Of course, even to try to kill him. But the witches are now very disturbed because in the witch's mouth, not mine, 
understand. The witches are saying there is something around Mr. Trump that's protecting him from our spells. Now, first of all, please understand this. A witch has the ability to cast a spell upon a child of God. Absolutely zero. As I've told you before, and I'll tell you again, if the devil could cast spells, if the devil could curse one Christian at his will, if his witches could curse one Christian at his will, there would be no Christian in this world today that was not cursed. They would have already cursed all of you. If the devil could kill one Christian at will, just because the devil had the power to kill a Christian or to kill anybody, if the devil could get his witches to cast spells for death on his God's servants, then the devil would have already killed every one of us. But he can't, and they can't, and it's nonsense. So their power to cast spells, we're not even paying attention to. But the fact that this is the bunch that is behind the party that's running against Donald Trump. Uh, we've not run across any witches that's voting for Mr. Trump that's trying to cast spells on Democrats. We have run across many who are praying to God that Mr. Trump wins. That's their business. That's their business. That's not what this is about. This is about God putting us as fortresses to try them that's among us. This party that is running against Donald Trump has witches that is in one with that party. That's called partaking. So if witches are at one with that party, involved in that party, and you then are doing the same, you are partaking with those of this evil. That's what the Bible says. So witches are now bemoaning the fact they can't curse Trump. So, once again, I'm only saying their words. I did not just say Donald Trump has something around him. Now the devils that's trying to cast spells on him, the devils that's trying to shoot him, the devils that's trying to kill him, they are the ones crying now like little babies. Because they say there's something around Donald Trump protecting him. Okay, we'll leave that at that. Let's look at this. All right, this is Kamala Harris at one of her rallies. Now, Kamala is talking, and you can't, you have to listen very close to hear it. But some young people in the background shouted out, Jesus is Lord. Now, Kamala is, a, is, is an atheist because she's a communist. Her daddy was a communist teacher teaching communist economics at Stanford University. She was raised by atheist communist. Fruit don't fall far from a tree. Now, someone cries out, a couple of young teenagers, holds out, Jesus is Lord. This is Kamala's reaction. Do the protections of Roe v. Wade and they did as he intended. <laughs> oh, you guys are at the wrong rally. <laughs> no, I think you meant to go to the smaller one down the street. Come on. See, these people don't like the Jesus is Lord bunch. These people don't like Christianity. Why? It's atheism. But communism is atheism. All of the communist nations are all atheistic nations. All of them. They all always have been. Government is God. She's a raised communist. Now, like the witches who's praying, but they can't get through to Trump. 
Now Kamala is telling the Christians and the Jesus is Lord bunch to move on down the road that you in the wrong rally to bring that mess. And then to a bunch of cheering people who love to kill babies. That's what she was talking about. Who welcomes the witches. All these people you heard hollering. They welcome the witches. But not the Jesus is Lord bunch. They welcome the transgenders. Not the Jesus is Lord bunch. They welcome the homosexuals. Not the Jesus is Lord bunch. You see, you're dealing with pure, bona fide, evil, wicked abominations. Look at this. Trump campaign hacked, traced to three Iranians seeking to disrupt the election. Okay, Iran hacked into Donald Trump's campaign. Okay, it's known, DOJ and the FBI has now even admitted it. You don't hear much about that though, do you? You remember all the Russian collusion and the Steele dossier and all of that that showed that Russia was behind and supporting Trump and messing with the election. You remember all that for, for four years and then it was proved that it was not the truth? Well now, Iran hacked, not threatened, Iran hacked Trump's campaign, took what they hacked from him and sent it to Kamala Harris. You hadn't heard a word about it, have you? But four years, you heard about Russian dossiers and still dossiers and Russia interfering for Trump's sake when it never even happened. And the Bible says this about the wicked. It says that they will scream there is a lion in the yard when there is no lion. The fact of the business is these people who's not reporting that Iran is messing with our election, that Iran hacked Donald Trump's campaign and sent the information to, Don, to uh, Kamala Harris, is the same people, well, that got caught after years of investigation. It was Hillary Clinton, that Steele dossier, that thing that they used to prove that Trump was in league with the Russians and the Russians aided him and messed the election up during Hillary's campaign. Come to find out that dossier was created by the Democratic Party and Hillary Clinton. Oh yeah, here's the final results of the court records. DNC, that's the Democrat National Committee. Clinton campaign agrees to steal dossier funding fine. In other words, they're fined. Clinton. Hillary Clinton in 2016 presidential campaign and the Democratic National Committee have agreed to pay $113,000 to settle a federal election commission investigation into whether they violated campaign finance laws by misreporting spending on research that eventually became the infamous Steele dossier. Did you even know that? Four years they blast Mr. Trump with slander, just as Jeremiah spoke of in the scriptures I read. Four years they blast him with lying slanders that Russia was involved in the election. And they used the Steele dossier to prove it and then come to find out they are the ones that had it created, Hillary Clinton. And they got fined $113,000 for it, but was it on your MSNBC and on your news? No, the liars are covering for the liars. The witches covers for the witches. The devils cover for the devils and the liars cover for the liars, you see. For those of you who watch this trash television called MSNBC and CNN, you never heard this, did you? That the woman that accused the man for four years is the one that created it herself and a federal court fined him $113,000. Why didn't you ever hear of that? Because they're lying slanderers, witches, and devils. Now, real quick, let's go back to Kamala. Kamala, being the communist that she is, and for all of you who are just ignorant concerning life, concerning governments, concerning communism, you see, the first thing communism does, always has done, when communists come to power, they disarm the citizens. Reasons are obvious because they're fixed to control you 
like rats on a wheel. So they take your guns. They've always done it everywhere, every time. Kamala, raised by a communist daddy who was a teacher at Stanford University, has said she's going to have, concerning our guns, a mandatory buyback. That means the government's going to offer you ever how much money they think that they need to offer you for you to give them your guns. It doesn't matter if you want to sell your gun or not. It's mandated. It means we're going to take them. That's what that means. And here she is being questioned. Listen to what she says. And it's, it's something I'm so passionate about and so looking forward to being president to address. We've got to deal with this. How mandatory is your gun buyback program? It's mandatory. Okay, she can't wait to be the president to deal with this. How mandatory is it? It's mandatory. That's straight out of the horse's mouth. She's telling you she is going to disarm you. Now, when this disarming takes place, and they take your guns, and they make laws now about your guns, or makes it illegal to purchase a gun, do you think the criminals are going to obey the law? Outlawing crack did not stop a crack epidemic. Taking guns away from people who will be law-abiding citizens and turn them over is not going to get them out of the hands of the criminals, the ones that uses the guns to kill. You've got to ask yourself, do you really need to be told this? It's basic common sense. Finally, Miss Harris was in Congress. She's the only person in Congress that voted more leftist than Bernie Sanders, who is a self-proclaimed socialist, communist. She voted more left than he did. And Mr. Sanders said concerning bread lines, which is always in communist countries because they destroy the economy. He said bread lines was good. You know, it's funny, sometimes American journalists talk about how bad a country is because people are lining up for food. That's a good thing. Please, let's, let's hit that one one more time. Listen closely. You know, it's funny, sometimes American journalists talk about how bad a country is because people are lining up for food. That's a good thing. You see, communist countries don't have churches. Communist countries don't let you have guns. And communist countries always have long bread lines. The ones in Russia that Bernie was talking about was sometimes eight hours long just to get a loaf of bread. That's a fact. Just look it up or get somebody else to do it for you. And Mr. Sanders, a self-professed communist, says that's a good thing. And the woman that's running for president right now has voted more left than him and her raised in an atheist, communist home by a communist daddy that was a teacher at Stanford University. Finally, her vice president back during COVID. We'll let you see this one one more time as he sent his troops down neighborhood streets, firing paint bullets at American citizens that he demanded could not come out of their house unless they was going to a strip joint. Tim Waltz made it impossible for businesses to run unless it was a strip joint or a place that served alcohol. Citizens, this is a man who loves communism spent his honeymoon in China and loves the way they do business. And this is exactly how they do business, what you're fixing to see. He sends his troops down neighborhood streets, commanding and screaming for the American citizens during COVID in Minnesota to get back in their house because they were standing on their front porch, the man who's running for vice president with Kamala Harris. Well, the people didn't go in immediately, so you'll hear the bomb squad out there. Holler, light them up. Oh, there's more. Look at this. They just keep coming. Oh, oh, oh. go inside! Get inside! Get inside! Get inside! Get, inside. Get your house down! Let's go! Light them up! Get in, get in, get in, get in, get in, get in. Get in. Oh, God, that hurt.
good. You okay? That's Minnesota, USA, under Tim Walt's governorship. Say, you're running out of time now. You're either going to make the right decision, or you're going to pay the price. Yeah. 